Hello everybody, welcome to Guidance Education Channel. We are continuing Class 12 Physics, Chapter 2, Electrostatic Potential and Capacitance. Our topic is Capacitors and Capacitance. Under that, we will discuss a few subtopics. Number 1, what is capacitor? 2, uses of capacitors. 3, shape and size of capacitors. 4, principle of capacitor. 5, Capacitance formula. 6. Dimension of capacitance. 7. Symbol of capacitor when used in an electric circuit. If you have not subscribed my channel, do subscribe it now and support me. Press the bell button and all button for notification of more videos like this. Like the video, share the video with your friends and also leave your feedbacks as comments in the comment box below. Thank you very much. Come, let us start the video. Our topic is capacitors and capacitance. What really is a capacitor? Capacitor is a system of two conductors separated by an insulator and can store large amounts of electrical energy at low potential in a very small space. Where exactly are they used? They are used in electrical circuits. They are passive electrical components just like inductors, resistors, etc. Capacitors are used along with resistors and uh, inductors in certain circuits. By the way, what is the meaning of passive electric components? It means they do not require electricity from an external source to function. A capacitor is already charged, that is, it has lot of electrical energy stored in it. What is the use of a capacitor in a circuit? For example, in a computer, it can maintain the memory when there is sudden power failure. In some other gadgets, they function as filters and protect gadgets from spurious signals. Spurious signals mean unwanted signals. Say for example, Unwanted signals generated by an amplifier. These signals are outside the band of signals of our interest. So, capacitors are very useful gadgets. What is the shape of capacitors? How do they look like? They are available in different shapes and sizes. Say, spherical shapes, cylindrical shapes, disc-like, etc. They have two leads. You can see that in the picture. Their size may range from capacitor beads, that is so small as a bead, to large power factor correction capacitors. Whatever may be the size or shape, all of them do the same thing and they work on the same principle. They store electrical potential energy and release it when it is required. Capacitors can be designed according to the requirement. The simplest type is a parallel plate capacitor. It consists of two metallic conducting plates kept parallel to each other and separated by a small distance. That is, they are kept in proximity, that is, close to each other. This small space is filled with an insulating substance. In capacitors, this insulating substance is called dielectric. I have already posted a video on dielectrics. Please click the i button in order to watch that if you have not yet watched it. Several materials are used as dielectrics. One property of the dielectric, that is dielectric constant, that is very important in deciding whether it is suitable to be used as an insulator in the capacitor. Okay, air is a good dielectric substance. We will discuss about this dielectric constant and how it decides the property of the capacitance in the coming videos. Now we have to understand the principle of capacitors. We will see the principle of capacitor. Consider a positively charged metallic conductor A placed on an insulated stand. This is the metallic conductor and the charges reside on the surface. It is charged to its maximum 
and it cannot be charged further. All around this conductor, there will be potential. We want to store more charge in it so that its potential can be increased. More charge can be added only if its potential is reduced. How can the potential of this conductor be reduced without losing charge? We know potential will become less if charge is removed. But we want to add more charge. An uncharged conductor B is kept near the first conductor A. Conductor A is placed on the insulated stand. B is not placed on the insulated stand. As you know, any metallic conductor will have large number of free electrons due to the influence of the insulated charged conductor A. A charge separation is induced in conductor B. Negative charge is induced on the inner side of metallic plate B. That is the side facing metallic plate A. And the other side, that is the opposite side, becomes positively charged. Metallic conductor B is still neutral because the total number of positive charges and negative charges is the same. Negative charge is equal to number of positive charge. Conductor B does not carry any excess charge. Now, the conductor B is earthed. That is, it is connected to the ground. It is grounded. As B is very near to A and A is positively charged, the negative charges on the inner side of the conductor B remains in place. Because they are attracted by the positive charges on A. But the positive charges on B get repelled by positive charge on A. And they move down into the earth. Now conductor B is negatively charged. So now there are two plates. Plate A and plate B which are oppositely charged. That is one is positively charged. The other is negatively charged. As a result, an electric field develops from A to B. There is electric field in between these two conductors means there is electric potential between A and B. So, this system functions like a device to store electrical potential or potential energy. Energy is stored in between these two plates, that is the space between these two plates. In the diagram, I have shown this plate A and B slightly apart, but they are kept very close to each other. I have shown this space only for you to understand. In the small gap, say D, between the two plates, a lot of electrical energy is stored. We said, we want to reduce the potential of A and charge A further so that the energy stored can be increased. So let us see further. Due to earthing, the metallic plate B has developed a negative charge and it has a negative potential all around the system of these two conductors. The negative potential on conductor B will affect the potential on A. For argument's sake, if the potential on A is 15 volt and that on B is negative 10 volt, then the potential on A will be reduced to 5 volt. So here, the potential of conductor A has reduced to 5 volt without losing charge. This is due to the presence of an earthed conductor near it. As the potential of conductor A is reduced now, it can be charged further. More charge can be added to it. More charge can be stored in this device now. That means more potential energy can be stored inside the device. We find here that the capacity of the conductor A to store more charge has increased by bringing another uncharged conductor near it. 
such a device is called capacitor the capacity to store maximum charge in a capacitor is called capacitance of the capacitor this is the principle of the capacitor let us define the principle of a capacitor capacitance of an insulated conductor is increased considerably when an uncharged earthed conductor is brought near it as it stores a lot of electrical potential energy inside it it can work passively electrical capacitance is the ability of a conductor to store electrostatic potential energy how much is the value of this capacitance how can we calculate this we need a formula that is capacitance formula we have already seen that when the capacitor is charged more its electrical potential increases that means charge q is directly proportional to potential v so q is equal to a constant c into potential v or we may say c the constant is equal to q upon v this constant is capacitance from this if v is kept unity then c is equal to q c is equal to q upon v is the capacitance formula it is a formula to calculate capacitance capacitance of a charged body is the charge required to raise the potential by unity that is by 1 volt this definition for capacitance seems more sensible we have a formula to calculate capacitance but what is its unit si unit of capacitance is farad it is equal to 1 coulomb per volt so capacitance of a conductor is 1 farad if 1 coulomb of charge on it increases its potential by 1 volt but this is a large unit so for practical purposes smaller units are used like milli farad 10 raised to minus 3 farad micro farad 10 raised to minus 6 farad pico farad 10 raised to minus 12 farad etc we will proceed to see the dimensions of capacitance if i have already learned dimension formula in class 11 whenever you learn a new quantity and its formula then for the examination a question may be asked as to write the dimension of that quantity we will derive the dimension formula of capacitance we have seen c is equal to q upon v that is the capacitance formula we will derive the dimension from the formula v the potential is equal to work then w upon the total charge that is potential is equal to work done for unit charge substituting for v capacitance c is equal to q square upon w q upon v becomes q upon w upon q so it becomes q into q upon w dimension of q the charge is equal to m raised to 0 l raised to 0 t raised to 1 and i the current raised to 1 so for q square it will be m raised to 0 l raised to 0 t raised to 2 and i raised to 2 dimension for work done is equal to w is equal to m raised to 1 l raised to 2 t raised to minus 2 so capacitance c equal to q square upon w becomes m raised to 0 l raised to 0 t raised to 2 i raised to 2 upon m raised to 1 l raised to 2 and t raised to minus 2 on simplification the m in the denominator becomes m raised to minus 1 l raised to 2 in the denominator becomes l raised to minus 2 and t raised to minus 2 in the denominator along with t raised to 2 in the numerator becomes t raised to 4 so the dimension formula for capacitance is m raised to minus 1 l raised to minus 2 t raised to 4 i raised to 2 before we wind up this video i will just tell you how capacitor is represented that is what is the symbol of capacitor in a circuit 
a capacitor with fixed capacitance is represented by two parallel lines as is shown in the diagram. The symbol for capacitor with variable capacitance is two parallel lines with a cross arrow. If the video was useful, do like the video, share the video with your friends and also leave your feedbacks as comments in the comment box below. Your comments are very valuable. Through your comments, I will be able to know what you think about the video and if I should make any changes. If you have not yet subscribed my channel, please subscribe it now and support me. Subscriptions are free as usual. Press the bell button and all button for notification of more videos like this. Thank you very much. We will meet in the next video with another important topic. Till then, bye. Take care.